Frankel of Arise Church, and after weeks of the church being strictly online, I have some good news. We're back. Starting on June 7th, we'll be resume meeting in person at the Ark of Hilo with two service times of 7.45 and 9.15 a.m. Now don't worry, Arise Online will still be available as people make the transition back to corporate worship. Now here are a few essential things we need you to do to make the transition as easy as possible. First, you will need to make a reservation to attend one of the services. Reservations will start on Monday, June 1st at 8 a.m. I know this may seem a little odd, but due to the distance requirements between rows, seating is limited. Next, during this phase of reopening, there will be no children's ministries. Now, families will be seated together during our time of worship. Now, I understand that kids get a little restless at times, and that's okay. We'll keep our service times under 45 minutes. Now, just like when you go to Target or Costco, when you come to church, you're going to have to wear a mask as you walk to and from your seats. We will have hand sanitizer available for you, but it would be a great help if you could bring your own for your own personal use. Per CDC recommendations, you will want to stay at least six feet apart from people. So no hugs or handshakes yet. And most importantly, stay at home and call your doctor if you have a fever or feel sick. Visit arise.church for the most up-to-date information concerning the reopening of our worship experiences. Let's never take for granted the opportunity we have to meet and worship the God of heaven and earth together. I can't wait to see you soon. Take care and God bless. Well, that was the message for Pastor Evan, and we're back. Our church will be open for this Sunday on service, but I'll be watching online because it's good to stay home with church because the church is your home. That's where God is, and um, we're open, so stay six feet away when going to church. No hugs or handshakes just yet, but. It will be available at the Ark of Hilo. So, my name is Kevin Foster. I do the media for the church for Pastor Evan. And that's why we have computers, tablets, cell phones, Kindles, Amazon, Alexas to stay connected all day, every day. So, it looks like this is going to turn out to a uh, slideshow video for church on Sunday. Then I'm going to put workshop music on it. Then I post it on Facebook. So, um, and so uh, we're back. We're finally open for worship, but limitations are seating is limited. So, but you can stay home and watch our churches, watch Pastor Evan online at Arise Church. You can even watch recent services to get caught up on recent on what you missed, what you have missed. So, um, we want to thank for Pastor Evan for all he do for the church and the rest of the Carmichael family and being strong and hope. So I guess, um, so a speaker, uh, is he, um, so they're going to have a special guest pastor with Arise Online with Pastor Joe Holmes. Special guest pat special guest pastor will be speaking on the pulpit on uh, May thirtieth, Saturday at five PM and Sunday at seven forty five nine seven forty five nine fifteen and ten four forty five. For more info go to our website at www.arise.church and Watch all of your recent, all of the videos of Pastor Evan, what he preached. And sp watch him as he speaks the word of God, of the Holy Spirit. And, um, and um, don't forget, click on our church website and 
hit the connect link, connect link, connect with someone, someone will get after you and do church work with Pastor Evan and um, keep you connected. So, he had a passage so that Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus, but in all reality, he also wrote it to you and I on the theme of hope. It comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, starting in verse 17. Here's what Paul wrote. And put yourself in a position where you're listening to him right directly to you. I ask that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance and his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Paul writes this passage on hope, and he talks about the future. You know, we all know how the present has radically changed our lives. It's been 40 years since I was grounded and sent to my room and couldn't go outside anymore. And so everything around us changes. We know that the present changes our life. When you get married, that present circumstance changes your life. When you have a child, if you get sick, that present circumstance changes your life. But what about the future? How does the future change your life today? Imagine two men and they have the same job and they're working for a year at the same job and they're both earning the same wage, but one of them has been promised if he lives and works the whole year, he'll get a $100,000 bonus and the other one hasn't gotten that promise. The future radically affects the present. And this is what Paul's talking about in this verse, especially when he says, I want you to know the hope to which he has called you. Look at those three words. First, Paul says, I want you to know this. You know, there's different ways of knowing something. You can have kind of a mental understanding. You can have a knowledge. You can know the principles. But Paul isn't talking about a mental understanding when he says, I want you to know about this hope. He is talking about a deeper experiential truth. Something you know in your gut. Something that you have truly experienced. All of us know that driving and texting is not a wise thing to do. We all get that principle. I had a friend who knew it mentally. And then he came one day within just an inch of killing a child. And I talked to him a few days later. And all of a sudden, he knew it on a whole different level. He knew it experientially. This is what Paul's talking about. I want you to know this hope, not just as a principle or a precept, but something that's in so deeply rooted in your heart. That's why he says the eyes of your heart would be opened for this. So you know it deeper, you know it, and you believe in it in a great way. I grew up in a Christian home. My parents were both Christians. They were in ministry. So I knew the principles of Christianity. I knew the truth. I didn't even reject the truth. I understood it. But it wasn't until I gave my life to Christ and was born again that I really knew what Christianity was all about. Paul's desire and God's desire is that today you would have a knowledge, a knowing, an experiential truth of what this hope is. And he uses the word hope, and we have to be careful because the way the Bible uses the word hope is different than how society defines hope. When society uses the word hope, which it oftentimes does, it uses it in the context of future uncertainty. Do you hope one day we can go to a restaurant? I hope so. Don't know, but I hope so. The society uses hope for something that is uncertain, but we're eager that it's possible it could happen. When the Bible uses the word hope, it's never about uncertainty. Right. It is always certain. It's just about timing. Paul says, I hope you know, I hope, hope you have this hope of the future. We may not know the timing, but we are certain of it. I had the privilege of talking with a North Korean pastor. And he knew during his life on earth, there would be times when he would be imprisoned for his ministry. There would be times when he would be with his wife and his children, times that were easier, times that were harder. He kind of knew what life was going to be like for him this side of eternity. But he had a hope in eternity that was so certain that shaped his time on earth. Now, none of us will experience the hardship that this man experienced. 
But for all of us, we have difficult times on this earth, and there are times that are easier and times that are harder. Paul says, I want you to know a hope about the future, that you know it so deeply, it's so certain, even though the timing's not known, that it'll shape your present. And then he ends this phrase by saying, to which you were called. He's saying there's a divine initiative that's involved in this, that you are called to this hope. Think about this for a second. You're called to hope like you're called to a vocation, like you're called to a family. We always consider hope to be kind of this emotional concept, this ethereal. And Paul says, no, no, this is actually a calling. If you're a Christian, part of your calling is a call to this kind of hope. You are wired by God to live today with eternity on your mind. God has framed you in that way. He knew for us to navigate life on this earth, part of our calling would have to include a hope of the future. You know it in your heart with the eyes of revelation. You really have a hold of its certainty, even though the timing may not be known. And you're called to it. It's a part of your faith. It's a part of your journey. So we have to ask this question. What is this hope? He talks about it with such a richness and such an importance for our life, we can sense, wow, I really want it. But what specifically is it? And he answers that in this prayer by saying, it's the riches of the glorious inheritance in his holy people. Now that's a really kind of hyper-spiritual phrase. What does it actually mean? When he uses this phrase, the riches of his glorious inheritance, the two words that are probably the most important to understand the meaning are the words we would gloss over. His, meaning his inheritance, and in, in his holy people. Paul says, you have this hope, and here's what this hope is. The hope is his inheritance. When somebody has an inheritance, it really defines their value. If I die and I leave my kids an inheritance, what I leave them defines my value. It defines my worth, my true value. Imagine if I was trying to find a gift for Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, one of the richest men, if not the richest man in the world. And I've got to buy him a gift, and I don't know what to get him because he can buy anything, everything, and he can have it shipped to himself by his own company. What would I buy him? But let's say... I find the right gift, and I give him that gift. And Jeff now has this gift from me, and it's so valuable to him that he discards all of his other wealth, and when he thinks about his inheritance that he's going to pass on, it is my gift that he thinks about. That's what an inheritance is. Think about this truth. Jesus had everything before he suffered, except you. There was nothing that he didn't have. He didn't just have it. He created it. Jesus created and had everything before he suffered except you. Paul wants us to understand such an important truth that the hope that we have is actually, in a sense, in us. That's why he says, in his holy people. And he's talking about all Christians, not just super Christians, the future hope that we have that helps us navigate this day is not just a place called heaven. It's not just a time down the road. The future hope that we have is actually in us. It's me. And it's you. Let me explain that. Imagine, think of when you introduce yourself to somebody. When we introduce ourselves to somebody, depending upon our perspective, Sometimes we kind of put a little bit more shine on us than is real. We kind of highlight the good parts of us so that we look better. Or if we're kind of down in the dumps, when we introduce ourselves, sometimes we only talk about the bad parts and the struggles. Both of those reflect how when we introduce ourselves to people, we aren't who we really want to be yet. We haven't become what our idea for our life and our identity really was. Paul is saying, here's your hope. There's a future. When you have such value, such richness to God, you are his inheritance in you. It's who you're going to become. Imagine Israel. They're in captivity in Egypt. 
And God delivers them out of captivity, and he's going to send them to the promised land. But he is not just taking them to a different geographic location where they can live in better circumstances. He's actually transforming them. It's as if they had to get out of Egypt, but then they had to kind of get Egypt out of themselves. So that when they went into the promised land, it wasn't just a different place that was easier and better for them to live, but they were a different people. This is what Paul is talking about in this passage. He's saying there is a hope for you. And the hope isn't just a different place where it's easier and better to live. But the hope that you can have for the future is you. And who Christ is forming you to be, this is Paul's prayer. That the truth that you would really know about yourself more than any other truth, the deepest truth you would know about yourself is how loved and valued you are by God? Think of it. When you fail, is your immediate response to worry about how you have disappointed God? Or is your immediate response gratitude for His love that doesn't measure you by your successes and your failures? When you have a desire and you bring that prayer to the Lord, in your mind are you thinking, wow, I need to pray harder, I need to act more morally, and you have a list of how you can behave that may give more weight to God answering your desires? Or do you bring it to Him with this unconditional faith as a little two-year-old child would bring to a dad with complete expectation that, of course, Dad's going to answer what my prayer is to Him? This is what Paul is talking about. When you look into a mirror and you see yourself, do you see yourself as an inheritance that is so incredibly valuable that everything else of wealth that God may have had just pales in comparison to that inheritance? Because that's what Paul says is our hope. We have this hope that he had everything before he suffered but me. And he was willing to go to the cross and resurrect for me and now I'm his inheritance. And if I know that that's my future, my transformation... I can put a hope in that for today that affects my life. He even describes it even more in this verse when he says, the power that raised Christ. So Paul is talking about a hope that we have for the future, knowing it, really knowing it. He's talking about us being that hope, God's inheritance. And then he defines it even more by talking about the resurrection of Jesus. And he does this for a specific reason. He wants us to understand that the hope that we have in who we are going to become is not just some kind of an ethereal, mystical hope. It's material. We will have new bodies. We will be a completely new person. When Jesus saves us, he doesn't just save kind of a mystical part of us. That's what differentiates Christianity from almost every religion. God loves you fully and completely, and he saves you fully and completely, and he is transforming you fully and completely, and there is a certainty in that. So even when you look at yourself today and you go, wow, I don't know, Paul says, I pray the eyes of your heart would be opened, that you would know that God is faithful to bring about that transformation and the complete transformation may be down the road a bit, but it for certain is happening, and it's not just kind of a spiritual, esoteric thing. It's actually very practical. You will only fully know how much God loves you when you include all of yourself into how God wants to love you. We have a tendency to hide parts of ourselves from people. So if we're really attractive, we won't hide our attractiveness, but we may hide part of our personality. And if we feel like we're not physically attractive, maybe we have this great personality. We have a tendency to look at ourselves and look at those pieces that don't seem to be that good, and we'll hide those and only highlight other pieces. But Paul says in his prayer, God loves every aspect of you. He loves every wrinkle you have. He loves everything about you. Your body, your soul, your spirit, your mind, your flesh. He loves everything about you and you will never fully know how much he loves you unless you bring your whole self to him. And you will never have a future hope that shapes your present day until you realize he loves all of you so much so 
that he materially resurrected so that we could materially resurrect. There's this incredible hope that I have for my life. I look at myself today and I may say, wow, Joel, you're not quite what you'd like to be. But then I look at the promise of God and that somehow I'm his inheritance and somehow there's a future hope that I have of who I will become and there's a certainty and that future hope affects my every day. And if you're like me and you read this passage and you understand what it says, here's your response. I can't believe that. It's just, it's too hard to believe that I could become that kind of a person. That's why Paul says there needs to be a spirit revelation in this. You can only get a hold of this hope on spiritual terms. You cannot mentally ascend to it. Because when you start to think about it only with your brain, you will quickly think about all the reasons why you don't look that way. You cannot even get a hold of it through experience. There isn't evidence of it. I find myself sometimes falling short during the day. I get too angry or I get too impatient or I get too frustrated. So evidence doesn't validate the hope. My mind and its ability to comprehend it doesn't validate the hope. Something supernatural takes place in me that makes me know, truly know, in this hope, even when my mind can't comprehend it, and even when my actions don't really show it. What is it that builds hope? Think about this. If you need hope, one way you can get hope is you can kind of speak hope into yourself. And you encourage yourself and you lift yourself up and you kind of pump yourself up with self-help. And that sometimes works, but not much. But another better way is when somebody speaks hope into you. Now you have an outside source telling you you're great or you have possibilities or potential. And that's much better than kind of speaking to yourself. But there's a third way that I think is the best way that really brings hope to you. And that is when you overhear people talking about you. They're not necessarily speaking to you, but they're speaking about you. And when you hear a conversation of two people who are speaking so positively about you, and you know they don't have to because they don't know you're there listening. But when you hear it, you know how true it is, how honest and authentic it is. This prayer of Paul's, it's like he's giving us an insight into a conversation the Apostle is having with God the Father and the Son and the Spirit. God is talking about you. And Paul is praying and listening and we're giving an insight into it. This is how God sees you. This is how God thinks of you. But you don't get there by understanding it only in your brain or by seeing it perfectly evidenced in your life. You get there because something spiritual, supernatural takes place. Today, God wants you to know a hope for the future that is rooted in the present. And that hope is not just a place or a time. That hope is you. Who He is making you to be. Who you will be because of His goodness and because of His grace. Not just in an ethereal way, but in a real way. Here's a verse from 1 Peter that helps summarize this message. 1 Peter 1.3 says this, God has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. This verse says that our hope is rooted in a birth. You kind of go from your false self that you're trying to improve on your own to your true self. And that true self may not reach its fulfillment to a future time, but you know because of the new birth there is this true self. You can try to experience Christianity you can even try to follow Jesus without this new birth, but it will never, ever get you to where you want to go. There is this thing called this new birth where you discover, wow, I actually am the hope that God wants to plant inside of me. And you know it in your heart. If you're listening to this message, and you're a follower of Christ, and you've experienced that new birth, sometimes it's easy for it to kind of fade away, and we lose a hope. And our hope is only based upon present circumstances. Or perhaps our hope is based upon the future, but it's more about a place and a time than ourselves. And Paul teaches a very important truth that changes life today. You are so valuable and so loved by God 
that he says, you are my inheritance. Everything I have pales in comparison to you. And just as he resurrected Jesus Christ from the dead, to show that He loves all of you and there is a material resurrection, there is a time coming when every fiber, every aspect of you, mentally, socially, spiritually, it's all going to be true and right. When I know that, I have a hope for today. When I struggle, I'm okay. Because I have a hope of what's coming. When things around me don't make sense, I'm okay, because I have a hope of who He is making me to be. And I don't know it by evidence, and I don't know it by my mind, but I know it by the Holy Spirit. I pray today, you will allow the Holy Spirit to show how loved and valued you are by God. And that you would allow that love and value to be the future hope of who He's going to make you to be, that gives you the present reality of how to navigate life. I love you guys. I miss you guys. I look forward to seeing you soon. God bless you. What an incredible message on hope. You know, one of the best things that you can do is to let hope into your life. Jesus is our hope. To open up your heart and to ask Him to come in. I don't know where you are. I don't know what your relationship with God is. But I can tell you this. He wants you to be a part of His family. He wants you to take those steps to draw near. You know when you open your heart, He'll come in. When you open your heart, hope can come in. And today, I want to say this prayer with you. If you're there and you're thinking, I need Jesus, I need to take this step. Say this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I ask Jesus into my heart. Jesus I believe I Jesus believe. died for me. I also believe that He rose from the dead and He's alive in me. Thank you for being my hope in Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that prayer, could I ask you to do a big favor? Go to arise.church and on our webpage, there's a link that says Next Steps. Click on that link, fill out that information and someone from our church will get in touch with you to help you take the next steps in your life. Here's the second thing is maybe you've been living and hope hasn't been there. Maybe you've been living and, and you've just been empty inside. I know it's been a tough season. I want to pray for you right where you are. Just stretch your hands towards whatever screen you're watching. Lord, I pray for those watching God that you can begin to stir their heart, to stir their faith and Lord, help them to feel hope once again. Although the news may be negative, although everything around, around us tells us that we can hope, Lord, stir our faith to believe. Stir our faith to begin to dream big again. Lord, to have that hope, to really be saying, God, that we trust in you. And no matter what season, no matter how dark it looks right now, God, that we continue to trust in you. Flood every heart, flood every life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I know we've been online for the last couple of weeks, but we got some good news. This is our last one as far as us strictly being online. On June 7th, we are back. We're back in church, and we're going to be opening up, and we're going to be rolling out uh, some of the uh, steps that we're going to be taking in the next couple of days. So be alert. Things will be a little different, but we're going to be back for church at our normal service times, but we are still going to be online for those who aren't able to join us yet in person. So you're going to still be able to find us online, but we'll be back June 7th, back at the Arca Hilo. I can't wait to see you. I can't wait to worship with you. We're so excited. So spread the news, stay alert as the, as the updates come out, and we're ready to welcome you back as we worship God as a church family. So again, have a great week. Thanks for joining. I can't wait to see many of you in person next weekend. And I know that you can see me online yet as we continue uh, worshiping God, even through the darkest seasons. Let's let Jesus be the hope of our life. Have a phenomenal day.
what a great message by Pastor Evan and uh, by Pastor Joe Holm. It's about hope. Hope is the key to what things to come. And we hope that this thing goes away. And Jesus will take it away. And that's the coronavirus. And we want to have hope. Hope that we want to pray for thankful Jesus that we have hope for the day. And um, we want to, um, that was a good message by Pastor Joe Holm. And um, he's going to be showing again tomorrow on church. And this, well, one o'clock past midnight, but it, like my mom always say, God never sleeps. He's always up. He's always up after the final hour. So, go to our website, arise.church, hit the connect link, connect with someone, and someone will connect with you and will write to you. And um, we're going to be, the church is going to reopen June 7th. Glad to see you all there. But I'll be watching online and um, making videos to share with my friends because I do the church, um, the media for the church for Pastor Evan. So if you want to be part of our church, go to our website, arise.church. Hit the connect link. Somebody will connect with you. And um, um, they're going back to our normal business times no handshakes or hugs just just yet so um just still yet yeah, social distancing and um stay away so um and this is gonna be my church blog so um stay tuned again for t in the morning at seven forty five, same service as as yesterday well, it's past midnight, but it's church after midnight. I'm doing church work after midnight. God never sleeps. He always hopes to be up for the next to the midnight hour. And um, it's church after midnight. So, thanks for watching. Bye. joining us today at Arise Online. We're so glad that you're taking the time to be with us. You know, there's so many distractions in life, especially when you're at home, you're on your phone, you're on your computer. So many things that want to try to get you to click away. But can I encourage you today, don't click away, but how about we press in? Press in for these next few moments. Let's dedicate this time to the Lord. Let's open up our heart and let's draw near to Him. There's a message today that you're not going to want to miss. If you're on right now, don't go away. This message is going to encourage your heart. Let's open up in prayer. Lord, thank you so much for all of our friends and family that are joining us literally around the world. Although we're in different rooms, God, we're still one heart under one banner under the name of Jesus Christ. So God, we press in. We draw near to you. We're ready to declare today that the church is alive. No matter what we face, the church is alive and we press on in Jesus' name. Amen. Faith is rising, and we know, we know, we know, and heart racing, living in freedom, is joy overflowing, and we know, we know, we know, we know, we know, we know, and our hope forever.
service where we take a few moments to talk about our giving. I want to thank you for your support to Arise Church over the last few weeks. I know things have been different. Uh, Things have been uh, obviously thrown upside down for so many of us, but we've continued to have church here and we've been able to reach people literally around the world because of your generosity. If Arise is your church, I would say this isn't the time for us to pull back, but this is the time for us to step up and engage and to continue to just trust the Lord through every season of life. So thank you again. Thank you for your big hearts. Thank you for your obedience, your generosity. If you want to give, you can go to our website, www.arise.church. You can give online. It is safe and it is secure. If you want the old-fashioned way, if you want an envelope, you can either call our office or you can email us at info at arise.church and we'll be sure to get you those envelopes. Either way, thank you again for your support. Thank you for your generosity and just having big hearts. We're going to continue in our worship here today. Won't you open up your hearts and draw near to the Lord with us? How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night darkness, your loving kindness, tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written, Jesus Christ, my living So great a mercy What heart could fathom Such boundless grace The God of ages Stepped down from glory To wear my sin And bear my shame The cross has spoken I am forgiven, the King of Kings has cost me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever, Jesus Christ, my living Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the one who said 
but the name that is Jesus. He who was senseless and will be through it all. So come with me in the space between all the things unseen and this reckoning. I know I will never be. Joy from every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be I count the joy in every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be Count the joy in every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be Church family, today you're in for such a treat because our message today is brought to us by one of the friends of our house, Pastor Joe Holm. Pastor Joe has been to our church a number of times and he's spoken into our church and also into our staff and into my wife and myself and our family. We love Pastor Joe. We value his friendship. We value what he brings to the table. Today, won't you open your heart? And as with every guest speaker, we say, let's welcome him to the platform, but today, welcome Pastor Joel to your home, to your house, wherever you are today. Welcome Pastor Joel, open your heart. Pastor Joel, thank you so much for being with us. Hey Arise Church, you know if there's one place I would love to be right now, it would be here.